Hebrews 3. Let's go there. Hebrews 3. Watch this. This is something that really messes up Trinitarian theologians' brains. See, they can handle that Jesus is the Son of God, and they will say He's God, but they, they, they won't say He's the Father. Do you understand? The Father to them is a separate person. If they call Him Father, it's a loose, loose sense of the term. It messes with their brain. Hebrews 3, let me start with verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Say, holy brethren. If you're my brother, and we're not talking gender here. If you're my brother, that means we all have a, the same father. See, here's the good news for me and for everybody here. All right? Is that because God is my father, I don't have to worry about my natural father. I don't have to worry about the color of my skin or the lack thereof. You know, just, just by reason of the fact that this brother's got color here today, he's a God in some people, in some people's mind. <laughs> but you see, by reason of the fact that God is my Father, I don't have to worry about my natural <laughs> descent. I've been regenerated. <laughs> I got the genes of God. I'm not God. Uh, but I've been regenerated. That's right. <laughs> Amen. So no matter if you're black, white, red, whatever. Amen. If God is your father. Say praise the Lord. Amen. So anyway, the Bible says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Say Jesus the Father. Jesus the Father. Who was Faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Who? Christ Jesus. Counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Inasmuch, he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. Who built the house? God. God built the house. Watch, watch. God built the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that build it, built all things is who? God. God. Just told you. God built the house. Come on, amen, amen. Come on. Who built it? God built the house. Now, they, he connects Christ Jesus with being God, the builder of the house. That's why he's greater than Moses, because Jesus as God built the house. He's not just son, he's God, the builder of the house, and we are his offspring. He's more than just a man, he's more than the son. He's God, the father, and we are his offspring. He is the one that's building his own house, and you are his house. That's why Christ Jesus is greater than Moses. Because he's God, the builder of the house. For every house is built by some, but he that built all things is God. Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son. You with me? He is God, but he's also son. Christ as a son over his own house if God is the one who built the house God is the origin is the origin of the house and God is the source behind the resource and the Bible says that Jesus but Christ as a son of his own house whose house we are if it's his own house and God's the builder of that house that means he has to be father not just son he has to be father he cannot be the builder of the house and just be the son. He has to be the father. He has to be God. Now watch. See, that blows their mind. They don't know what to do with that. You, you got a Trinitarian on your mind? You know, you're talking to them and they believe in three separate persons in the Godhead. You know? 
Father, Son, Holy Ghost are separate from each other. Co-equal, co-eternal, all that. You're showing this passage right here. They, they don't know what to do with that. Because God is the builder of the house. And the Bible says, Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Read 1 John 2, 22 and on through. And it talks about how important it is to hold fast what you believe to the end. You need to believe that Jesus is not just the Son. You need to believe that Jesus is Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Father. He's God. Give God some praise. No wonder the writer of Hebrews says he's greater than Moses. Because <laughs> he's not just a son in a house. He's the God who built the house. And we're his offspring, which makes him father. Acts 17, 29. <clears throat> now I'm fixing to just real quickly run through some information with you. But, but watch what he says. Now Paul is standing there on Mars Hill and he's speaking to ye men of Athens. He's speaking to a bunch of Greeks. Okay? They worship many gods, a Pathanon of gods. And Paul comes across, you know, a pillar. That they set up to the unknown God. Paul said, I'll tell you who that unknown God is. Let me tell you who that unknown God is. But to make a long story short, verse... 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, which means that makes him father. If I am his offspring, that makes him my father. That makes him my authority. That makes him my Lord. Do you understand that? How many of you are the offspring of God? Then that makes him your God, that makes him your authority, and that makes him your Lord. You are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the Godhead, say Godhead, Godhead. is likened to gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. God is a spirit. Who came in the form of a man. And we are his offspring which makes him father. God, Father, Lord, authority. The Godhead. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver stone graven by order of man's hand. Device. The Godhead there is the word divinity. His nature, His attributes, the nature, the attributes of God. His divinity. Right. Romans 1.20, the Bible talks about the creation. Right. Declares unto you His eternal power and Godhead. The creation shows you His attributes, His divinity. It shows you His power. It shows you His wisdom. It shows you His Godhead. His divinity. But Colossians 2, which Servetus quoted. Let's go there, and I'm going to close with this. Colossians 2. Say, praise the Lord. Lord. If y'all weren't in here in the, the lessons on how to study the Bible, we went through these things. But Colossians 2 says, For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Acts 17, it's Godhead divinity. In Romans 1.20, it's Godhead divinity. But in Colossians 2 and verse 9, it's Godhead deity. So in 2.9, divinity is not enough. And Paul wrote, the only Godhead is mentioned three times in the New Testament. Three times in the Bible. And every one of them was written by Paul. And so what God is doing is saying, Paul, tell them what you saw on the road to Damascus. Tell them who you saw when I struck you down and you said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Come on, Paul. Tell them about the Godhead. Tell them about his attributes. Tell them about his nature. But tell them that he's God all by himself. 
He don't just have the attributes of God. He doesn't have just the nature, his attributes. He's got his very being. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. He is not the second person to anything. He is the fullness of God bodily. Not just divine, but deity. Do you understand? We are his offspring. Woo. First Corinthians 8, and I'm going to close with this one. I am, I promise you. Look at your neighbor and say, you're his offspring. Where it makes him father, which makes him God, which makes him Lord, which makes him my authority, which makes him my power. That's, that's, a, that's an attribute. That's his nature. Power. So, whoo, God. He's my power. He's my authority. He's my God. He's my father. His name is Jesus. I've got his nature, divine nature in me, but I'm not God. But he was God. Not just divine, but deity. Oh, look at him and say, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. Father, Son, Holy Ghost in Jesus. Because the Father is the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is the Holy Ghost. Just another name for the same Spirit. It's God in power. God in activity. All the force of the Godhead is in Him. He's not in the Godhead. The Godhead is in Jesus. Give God praise. So I not only have a glimpse of God, His attributes or His divinity. That was a glimpse of God. When Jesus walked this earth, he made the invisible God visible. He made the God that had no human body. He made, that God walked into a human body and walked in this earth. Sight to the invisible God. All right, let me go. First Corinthians 8. He that hath the Son hath the Father also. First Corinthians 8, verse 6. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Woo, woo, glory to God. <laughs> Can you imagine Servatus? Way back there in the 1500s, 20 years of age. <laughs> writes a book exposing all the errors of the doctrine of the Trinity. And John Calvin, a Protestant preacher, a theologian. I'm telling you, a theologian said, put him in prison and put him to death. And the Protestant church put him to death because he denied the Trinity and infant baptism. That man died for what I'm preaching to you tonight. That's why I value it. That's why I love it. That's why I praise God for it. You can sit there and be dead if you want to. But there's somebody that died for what you're hearing. Lord, have mercy on your precious little soul. If you could just sit there and dead. And a man died for what you're hearing. Put to death by so-called Christians. Put to death by Trinitarians. Thank God for that. Do you love it tonight? Well, if you have a problem, if you don't believe that God is the Father... Then I got a scripture for you. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6. But to us there is but one God. The Father. God is the Father. You hearing me? I had somebody tell me. He said, well, I believe that Jesus was God, but I just don't believe he was the Father. Well, if Jesus is God, then he has to be the Father. Because there is but one God, the Father. God is the Father. The invisible Spirit of God is the Father. Give God some praise. Paul said, but to us, there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things. And we in Him and one Lord Jesus Christ. By whom are all things, and we by Him. So, one God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word and there is K. 
Chi. It can also be translated that is. One God the Father, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. One God the Father, Chi can also be translated even. One God the Father, that is Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. One God the Father, even the Lord Jesus Christ. See, in Trinitarians, they get a hold of that and say, well, there's God the Father, and there's the Lord Jesus Christ, separate persons. Oh, really? No, 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 no. One God the Father, even the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one Lord. Is not God the Father Lord? What you have here then is one God the Father. He's the Father. He's also the Lord Jesus Christ. Different roles, different modes of the same God. Give God some praise. Say hallelujah somebody. So God is our Father. He's creator. We are his offspring. He's also Lord Jesus Christ. Manifestation of God as Son. Jesus is Lord and God. One God the Father, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. One God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, or even the Lord Jesus Christ. One God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One God the Father, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? Kai can be translated that way. One God the Father and one Lord Jesus Christ. Not two persons. This God is the Father. This God is the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't believe me? Listen to what Thomas said. John 20, 26. <laughs> and after eight days again, his disciples were with him. And Thomas with them. Then came Jesus. The doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy fig finger and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. But we believe that there is one God, the Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. God is the Lord. God is the Lord Jesus Christ. God is the Father. Thomas said, the God of me, the Lord of me. His name is Jesus. That's what the literal says. The God of me, the Lord of me. So let's read 1 Corinthians 8 again. First Corinthians 8. In verse 6. But to us there is but one God. Say one God. One God. one God. one God. The Father. Of whom are all things. And we in Him. And one Lord Jesus Christ. By whom are all things. And we by Him. Same God. He is the Father. God is the Father. And God is the Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God. The God of me, the Lord of me. His name is Jesus. Give God some praise. You know what? I can't stop. Sit down. We'll just make it two sessions in one hour. I can't stop. I cannot stop. There's a reason I can't stop. Jude, verse 4. Watch this. Jude, verse 4. I know you want to go home, but I can't stop. So if Servetus can die for it, then I think I can stay for it. Sorry to break into your time. But I'm not on your time anyway. I'm on God's time. And you're not on your time anyway either. You're on God's time. Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained against condemnation ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God, the only Lord God, 
and our Lord Jesus Christ. The only Lord God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Literally denying the only Lord God that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Denying the only Lord God even our Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? 1 Corinthians 1, go there. There's only, come on. There's only one Lord, one God. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1. Woo, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Now, I'm going to just throw this out there to you. I don't have time to teach it. But you always look at the context. These salutations that people go to to try to show you if there's more than one person in the Godhead. Are you with me? Read the salutation and then read the context. The context is always going to show you what God did through Jesus. And Paul is giving thanks to God for what God did through Jesus. What the Father did through Jesus, the Son. You understand what I just said? He's not worshiping one God over here and worshiping Jesus separate from Him. He's saying, thank you God for what you did through the Lord. Thank you God for what you did through Jesus. And bringing us salvation. Look at the context of it. Okay, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 3. Grace unto you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. See the word from there in the italics? It's not supposed to be there. Okay. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, notice. Grace be unto you and peace from God who is God. He is our Father and who is God? He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we don't have God the Father here and then God the Son here. God, the fa- God our Father is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's one Lord. Jude 4, I just read it to you. One Lord, one God. Thomas said, the God of me, the Lord of me. Okay, you getting the point here? Okay, so God our Father and our even the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, watch this. I'm going to read it to you out of the literal, okay? That's King James Version. It's still all right. But you need to understand something. There are no commas in the Greek. Right? This statement is about the same one God. You're not hearing me. What are you saying here in 1 Corinthians 1 3? Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. No commas in the Greek. It's talking about the same God. If you don't believe me, come look at it, honey. I got it right here. This is called a Greek interlinear New Testament. It's got the literal Greek and it's got the actual literal translation in the English. There are no commas. This God we're talking about is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, I know I'm fired up, but man, if a man can die for this, I can be fired up about it. Grace be in your peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God. Let me read it to you. 1 Corinthians 1, 3. Here's the literal. Grace to you and peace from God, Father of us and Lord Jesus Christ. So God is the Father of us and God is the Lord Jesus Christ. No commas. He's the Father of us. He's the Lord of us. He's the God of us. He's not the second person in anything. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead in bodily form. Jesus the Father. So that if you have the Son, you have the Father. If you deny the Son, you don't have the Father. The way you can have the... Come on. The way you can have the Father is by having the Son. Because He is one and the same. He is God the Father. Even the Lord Jesus Christ. Give the Lord some praise. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now notice. Notice the little word from. From. Or from. Notice there's only one from. So if you've got two people, 
How can you have one from? If you got two people, that, you know, something's supposed to be coming from. If you got two people, you're supposed to have two froms. But this one we're talking about is God the Father, even the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's from that one God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we have these things. There's not two froms from two people. And there's not two people. One from. One God. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. See, if you just take your old Trinitarian glasses off, throw them and cra- just, won't you just get them and break them? When you read those same things, okay, there's God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So the one, two. Well, what about, okay, God the Father, Lord Jesus Christ. God, Father, Lord Jesus. You have four. And if you count Christ as another one, you got five. And on top of that, you'll notice that the Holy Ghost isn't mentioned in that salutation. In fact, you read through the, uh, the salutation of Paul. I don't remember him putting the Holy Ghost in that because God the Father is the Holy Ghost. God, God. God manifests as Father. God manifests as Holy Ghost. God in the Son. Manifests in the Son. You understand? So God's, God is the Father. God is the Holy Ghost. Come on. Yes. Are you getting my point here? Do you even yes. understand what I'm saying? Yes. These salutations are not trying to show you, trying to divide God up. Because right, right. if they were, if you were a Trinitarian, you'd want to find the Holy Ghost there somewhere. <laughs> Where'd he go? He's missing. No, he's not. He is God. Okay. It can be translated, God, you want to put a comma, God, our Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. So God is the Father, and He's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Isn't God good? Give God some praise. It's not two froms or from two. And I'm telling you, if you'll read verses 1 through 9, you'll see everything that God has done through the Son. And you'll see Paul praising God for what he did through the Son. Praising the Father for what he did through the Son. Hallelujah. 1 John 2. Hang in here. Say, Jesus the Father. See, y'all got quiet on me because I kept you. Yeah, you get, you, you're on fire for God as long as it's on your terms. <laughs> Not all of you. Just a few of you. 1 John 2, 28 through 29. You ready? And somebody get 2 Thessalonians for me. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. But I'll read 1 John 2, 28. All right, here we go. Going back to 1 John 2. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear. Who? Who? Who's coming? Who's this talking about? Jesus. Jesus. But he's called the Father in this passage. And we're called his children. If we're his children, that means he has to be our Father. It's talking about the Father, and it's talking about when the Father appears. Now, you, no man has seen God at any time. So when the Father appears is when He comes in the Son. Watch. Now, now, little children, abide in Him that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His parousia. At the parousia of the Father. The second coming of Jesus is the parousia of the Father. It's when the Father comes back in visible form in the Son. Okay, you with me? If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteous is born of him. So we have a father, and we have been born of him. And this father that we have been born of is coming back. And you're going to see him with your eyes. 
His name is Jesus. That's why it says when you have the Son, you have the Father. Watch. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. When Jesus came, they did not know there's Father. They didn't know there's Father. There's God. In the Old Testament, God was not primarily seen as Father. He was seen as a God of vengeance and a God of wrath. He was called Father, but not primarily. But He comes in the New Testament in Jesus. And Jesus is the Father that the world did not know. Did you hear that? So if you don't know that Jesus is the Father, then you're just like the world. Because the world does not know He's the Father. I know He's the Father. I know He's more than just Son. I know Jesus is Father. But I know that Jesus is more than Father because Father is the invisible Spirit. Jesus is Son, the invisible Spirit coming in visible form. So he's son and he's father. He's spirit and he's man. You with me? But the world didn't know him. Not long ago, I was in a discussion with a, with a man. And I respect this man. And he's saying Jesus is God, but I don't believe Jesus is the father. So I got on my little computer. And I emailed this to him. And I said, you know what? When Jesus came here, they didn't know he was the father. I hope at some point you do. Because he kept saying, I don't believe that Jesus is the Father. He said, I believe that Jesus is God. I said, at some point, I pray you know more than the world knows. Because the world didn't know that Jesus was the Father. And I pray at some point you get a revelation that Jesus is the Father. There is one God, the Father. <laughs> Give God some praise. The world knew him not. Beloved, now we the sons of God doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he, the Father, shall appear I'm showing you who this is. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. <laughs> Jesus is not just the son. Jesus is the father. You understand? Who's got 2 Thessalonians 2? Uh, who's got it? Okay, read it, brother, please. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us. All right? God and Father, the Lord Jesus. Same one. With me here? Okay. How many of y'all believe Jesus is the Father then? If we are His children, then he has to be my father. He calls us the sons of light. Does not the Bible say that Jesus is the light of the world? If I'm a son of the light, that means Jesus is my father. And there's one God, the father. Jesus is God the father. I'm a son of light. He is the light of the world. Okay? So the world didn't know him, the scripture says. It is, he is the one, the father that is coming back, right? He is the father and we're born of him. I thank God for that, don't you? John 14. Verse 8, Philip saith, unto, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. He's looking at the Lord. He says, show us the Father. All right, all right. And it will satisfy us or suffice it us. Okay. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip. You're you want me to show you the Father? Have I not been so long? You don't know me after all this time. He that has seen me hath seen the Father. 
Jesus said, you're looking at him. I am the Father. I'm not just a second person in a Godhead. I am the Father. When you've seen me, you have seen the Father, said Jesus. I'm going to take the word of Jesus, not some Trinitarian theologian. When you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest not thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me, because the Father is everywhere, so that body is in the Father, but the Father is in that body. You're not just looking at the Son, Jesus said. You're looking at the Father made visible. I have put sight to the invisible God. That was his purpose, was to declare the Father, to manifest the Father, to put sight to the invisible God. Jesus said, don't you know I must be about my Father's business? And my Father's business is to make him known. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Verse 9, believe me that I am in the Father, the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my, and to my Father. Oh, goodness, man, the Father's everywhere. Because ever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Say amen. amen. So when you saw Jesus, you saw the Father. Isaiah 9, real quick. I'm fast now. <laughs> Catch you off guard, see? One minute slow, next minute fast. See, you just never know, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, I'm going. I'm right now. You're not, you're not up with me. I'm sorry. For unto us a child, Isaiah 9 and 6. Now in Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah said, let me tell you something. This prophet says, the one that's going to come is Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, the virgin shall be with child, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1 says, being interpreted is with us God. So the son that's going to be born of the virgin is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Jesus said he's the father. When you've seen me, you've seen the father. He's not the second person. He is the father. He is God. Okay, watch. So Emmanuel, God with us. So who is this Emmanuel? Isaiah 9 and 6. You read Isaiah 7 some other time. 7, 14. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born. Say a child is born. Unto us a son is given. All right, that's his humanity. A prophecy about Jesus, his humanity. He is going to be a child, he's going to be a son given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful. So this child, this son, Emmanuel, is wonderful, or he's a wonder. He's a wonder in his birth. He's a wonder in his deity. He's a wonder in his humanity. He's a wonder in his work. He's a wonder in his nest. You ever think about him? He's a wonder. He's wonderful. He's Emmanuel. He's a wonder. He's also counselor, which means he's the Logos. He's the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He's the Counselor. He is the Logos. The Mighty God or Mighty L. The Mighty God. There is only one L. There is only one God. Listen, L, God, is never used for false gods or any other God in the Bible except the one God of the Bible. Isaiah, let me, he said, let me tell you something. Isaiah never used the word God, L, in any other way than applying to the one God of the Bible. And he said, this one, this son, and this child that's going to be born, he is wonderful, he's counselor, but he is mighty L. He is the only God of the Bible. Give God praise. The everlasting Father. So He's Son, He's Child, He's Wonderful, He's Counselor, He's Mighty Hell, and He's Everlasting Father. How can He be Son and Father at the same time? I've already explained it to you. 
And then he says he's the Prince of Peace. God in the Son. Give God the Father in the Son. L in the Son. A few more scriptures. I'm almost done. Only five more pages. John 14, 18. <clears throat> I know I'm not doing a real good job, but at least maybe so you can take some of this stuff and, and use it somehow. I'm telling you, it is vital for you to believe what I'm preaching about Jesus. is the Father. Jesus is God. If you don't believe that, you cannot be saved. That's how serious it is. You can claim to worship God, but if you not deny Jesus, deny the Son, you don't have the Father. John 14, 18. Going back to John 14. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you fatherless. I will not leave you as orphans. What did he say? I will come to you. I will be your father. I will not leave you as an orphan. I won't leave you a coverless. And coverless means orphan. He said, I'll come to you. I'll be your father. Woo, glory to God. He cares for me. He protects me. He intercedes for me. He covers me. That's what a father does. Psalm 68, 5, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Isaiah 60, oh, yeah, 64, 8. Isaiah 64, 8. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we're going back over to Isaiah now. Brother Mark, in just a minute, brother, I wanna, I'm going to help you. When you get a chance, turn to Isaiah 60, verse 16. I'll let you read that in a little bit, okay? I got to bail him out. He really messed up Sunday night. I'm going to help him out. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. Come on, amen. <laughs> so if Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's what you, he said, when you've seen me, you've seen Jehovah. You've seen Yahweh. Because here in 64, <laughs> hallelujah. But now, O Lord, O Lord's all capitalized. That's Yahweh or Jehovah. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, thou art the potter, and we all are the work of thine hand. Right? Amen. John 1030. Go there, please. Quickly. Come on. Got your workbooks out? Let's go. 1030. How fast are you? <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to turn there, do you? Praise the Lord. I got a one God theologian in here, man. John 10, 30. I and my Father are one. Doesn't say I and my Father are two. I'm the first. I'm the second person. He's the first person. I and my Father are one. And then somebody will say, well, they're one like your husband and wife are one. In unity. No. Come here. Stand up here, beautiful lady. Boy, isn't she beautiful? Man, she's, she's all mine. Mm. It's not like, father, not like husband and wife. Because when you've seen me, you for sure hadn't seen my wife. And when you've seen my wife, you sure hadn't seen me. Okay? It's not like in unity. When you, I and my father are one. Come here and give me another kiss. What verse was that? I'm all... all <laughs> I got to finish quick, you know. <laughs> I and my father are one. Okay, let's, let's go down here. Uh, verse 33. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou being a man makest thyself God. They understood what Jesus was saying when he said, I and my father are one. They understood that Jesus was saying, I am God. They wanted to kill him for that. 
He's not the second person. He's God. I and my Father are one. Woo, man. Revelation 1 and 8, quickly. Woo, thank you, Jesus. This don't get you excited. There ain't nothing that gets you excited. If this doesn't get you excited, you probably don't even know God. You're probably not even saved. Revelation 1, 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Alpha and Omega, Jesus is saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. All right, you with me here? Go to Revelation 22. <coughs> 21, Revelation 21. Let's go to Revelation 21, 6. He said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give it to him that is a thirst, the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So there in Revelation 21, 6 and 7, it says that God is Alpha and Omega. It says that I will be his son, which means he's my father. So it's the father in this passage that's Alpha and Omega. But in Revelation chapter 1, the Bible said in verse 8, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, which makes him the father, which makes him God, absolutely God in None less than God. John 14, 3. Woo. John 14, 3. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. John 14, 3. The Bible says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Who's coming again? Jesus is speaking here. He said, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I just got through reading you in John chapter 3. The Bible said the Father is coming back. The Father is going to appear. Jesus said he's coming back, which makes him God, which makes him the Father. The one who's going to come, the one that's going to appear. Woo. Hebrews 2.13. Hebrews 2.13. Only got three more pages to go. No, no. I got three more pages to go, but it's just not this lesson. <laughs> I'm preaching to the remnant now. The rest of them already left. This is for the remnant. <laughs> Hebrews 13. I, I'm sorry for lying, by the way. I told you I was going to quit an hour ago. I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I lied to you, man. I'm not supposed to do that. I just can't help it. I mean, I can help lying, but I can't, can't help going on. Come on. Hebrews 2. Okay, ready? Hebrews 2. Verse 13, it says this. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. He is the father over his children. Psalm says, God is the father. Isaiah said, Yahweh is the father. Jesus says, you're my children. Makes him my father. Give God praise. So God is manifest as Father. God is manifest in the Son. God is manifest as Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Jesus the Son. Jesus the Father. Jesus the Holy Ghost. One God. It's all in Him. Give God praise. Go home and read Michael Cervantes. What an awesome testimony that is. All he had to do was flip two words. Put eternal, eternal in front of son. And he could have walked home free. That's all he had to do. If you don't have, is there any left? Are those papers left? Brother, you got one? Anybody need one? You didn't get one. Lift your hand, please. We'll get you one. 
Everybody get one on Michael Cervantes, the paper I gave you at the first. Okay. Brother, uh, uh, what's that brother's name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Sister Lori's over here. And who else? Pearl, Sister Pearl. You get one? You got one. Okay. We'll make sure everybody gets that. That's an awesome, awesome, awesome paper. Read it. It'll bless your life. I'm going to let you go, okay? Yes, sir? Right.